Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video, we are going to be making this epic star rating system. And guess what? It's actually a custom element. All right, so let's get started. Here is the HTML file. I also have two other files here, starrating.css, that's empty, and so is starrating.js. So here's our HTML, pretty basic, just a link to our style sheet, a link to our JavaScript, and right off the bat, I'm gonna head over to our web browser and grab ion icons, which is what I'm gonna be using for just the star icon, actually. Pretty much, I mean, if you're only gonna be using this for star icons, don't bother using the whole entire icon font, but it's just for fun here, so whatever. Link to there. All right, so now we have our icon font. There we go. What I want this to look like, um, since we're gonna be using custom elements, is something like this. Now this is what it's gonna be looking like to the CSS, but all we have to write in the HTML is gonna be something like x dash uh, star dash rating. Okay, and that's pretty much all we're gonna have to write. But to the CSS, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna flesh it out so that we can style it beforehand, and then we'll add uh, the JavaScript. So we're gonna have an x dash star dash rating and just treat that like a normal element because it pretty much is. And then inside of that, we're gonna have stars that, oh, come on, star, that look like this. And some of them are gonna be full and other ones are gonna be empty. So uh, we'll have three full stars and three empty stars. Now, of course, this is not gonna look like anything. So we'll head over to the CSS and start styling it up just a little bit. Say x star rating font family. We're only gonna be using ion icons here. So ion icons, so hard to spell for some reason. And I'm gonna make the font size ridiculously big just so that it's really easy to see. Obviously you wouldn't want it this big in production, but whatever, font size. 48 pixels, okay. And display in line flex. All right, now let's go over to styling the stars themselves. I'm gonna X star rating and then star after because um, we're gonna be setting the content in the CSS for the star icon. So content, this is gonna be an empty star. I'm gonna head over here to our ion icons cheat sheet and search for star. Here we go, our empty star CSS content looks like that. So just copy that, head back over here, um, paste it in there. And I'm gonna say the color is, um, never knew choosing grays was so hard. All right, 777, seven, seven. perfect. Okay, then X star rating, star full after. Okay, content, head back over here to my trusty cheat sheet, copy that, paste that in there, and color is gonna be FD0, which is basically gold. All right, that should be just about it for the CSS, except I wanna add one more thing, that's cursor, pointer, so it looks like that you can click it. All right, should be done with the CSS. Let's head over to the JavaScript and start having some fun. So, wait a second, I should check what this looks like. Yes, perfect, looks beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna delete all of this because we're gonna be generating this with JavaScript. So. This is what we're gonna start out with. I'm gonna define a class called star rating, and that's going to extend a HTML element. Okay, um, we have our constructor, looks like this, and we'll call super right away. And now to demonstrate something, I'm gonna leave it like this, come over to our page, refresh, we have nothing of course, open up our de developer tools, and say new star rating. And we get an error, illegal constructor. Now if I remove this, remove the extends there, and I have to remove super then too, um, refresh, 
say the same thing, it works just fine. Um, and if I had extended a different class that wasn't HTML element, it would also work. The reason um, is that HTML element is kind of special because, well, it represents an HTML element, which is very specific to web development. You know, it's kind of unique. I mean, it's not like some random object you came up with. So we have to actually register our star rating as an element so that the browser knows what to do with it. So we say window.custom custom elements dot define. And then here's where we define the name of our element. And that's what this is x dash star dash rating. And I'm going to say x dash star dash rating. So now those two go together. And that goes with star rating. Now, the reason that I prefix this with an x is just so that it's really, really painfully obvious that it is a custom element. <laughs> that's 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 it. Now, if I come over to our page refresh and say new star rating, it works and we get this element here. The browser now knows what to do with it. Now that we have that out of the way, we can get into even more fun stuff. So I'm going to say this.stars equals an array and we're going to store our star elements in there. Uh, for now, I'm going to say for let i equals zero, i is less than five. Um, we'll add a property so that we can have a number of stars different than five. And then i plus plus, because that's our standard for loop. And I'm just going to say let s equal document dot create element div k s dot class name equals star. And this dot append child, if I can type s. I don't need quotes. What am I doing? Okay, and this dot stars dot push s as well. Okay, so now we should be generating five stars. Beautiful. Now we need to, well, I'm just going to go ahead and add this function here. I'm going to call it um, highlight. Actually, I'm going to add it up here. Um, highlight. And that's just going to take an index. And it'll highlight all the stars up to and including that index. So we'll just say this.stars.foreach. dot, stars dot for each. And we get star and an index here. And I'm basically just going to say star.classList.toggle, and we'll force toggle it to a specific state. And that will be whether or not it is full, dependent on whether or not i is less than or equal to index. That's it. OK, so now if I say this.highlight, um, Four, it highlights all of them because it highlights up to index four. If I say two, it'll highlight the first three. Beautiful. And if I say highlight like negative one, it doesn't highlight any of them. Okay, so that's beautiful. Um, I'm gonna create the hover uh, effect now. So I'll say this dot add event listener mouse move. And this is actually pretty fun to implement. Um, what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to grab the box, bounding box, client bounding box, whatever you call it. Let box equals um, this dot um, get um, bounding. There it is. That that's what I want. Get bounding client rect. Um, that just gives us kind of the coordinates or the offsets of this star rating. So it'll give us the left edge, top edge, all that stuff. Beautiful. And then I'm going to find the index of the star that should be highlighted um, via this complex mathematical formula. Star index equals, see if you can follow along, it's actually not that bad. It's e.pageX, so that's where the mouse is on the page, minus this, no, minus box.left. So that's going to get the offset of the mouse relative to, or the, the location of the mouse relative to the top left corner, or just the left edge of our star rating thing here. So it's going to tell us where our mouse is like this. Okay. 
And then I'm going to divide that by box.width. Okay, so that'll just give us like the, the fraction of how far across the star rating the mouse is at this point in time. And then I'll multiply all of that by this.stars.length. I actually don't need parentheses here. I need the parentheses here because I'm going to floor this. Math.floor. Now, to demonstrate that this works, I'm just going to console.log it. Star index. All right, now as I hover over here, all right, it's giving me a two down here, which is the third star. If I hover over this one, it should give me four. Yep, sure enough. And here should give me one, or zero, zero, because it's the first one. Perfect, so that is working. Now we can just say um, this.highlight until star index. So now if I refresh, it'll highlight whatever we're hovering over. Beautiful. Of course, the problem is it's not clearing what we're hovering. I mean, if I hover over four, then mouse out, it stays at four. So what I want to do is reset it to the initial value that it had or the value that it had before. Um, and to do this, first I'm going to give it an initial value at page load by setting this property here, say value equals 3. Okay, so this value is going to say highlight the first three stars. Now I'm going to define some getters and setters up here. So get value, that'll be pretty basic. It's just return this.get attribute value. Easy. And then we're going to have to say set value to something. And we'll define that in just a little bit. But basically what I wanted right now was get value. And dun -dun 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 -dun. so that we can define a this dot add event listener, a mouse out event listener, in which case I want to this dot highlight just this dot value. Reset it basically. Okay? So right now this dot value should be three, um, but it's not highlighting. Oh for Pete's sake. Um, right, this is not zero base, so it has to be minus one. Okay, so now it should highlight the first three when I mouse out, which it does, um, but it doesn't do that at first load. So we are going to put the set value, all of the set value. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. Where did I put that? Okay. Set value is going to be pretty simple. It'll be this dot set attribute value to whatever val is, and then this dot highlight um, value this dot value minus one, effectively. And then here we can change this to this dot value equals this dot value, which is kind of circular, but it's going to work. Prove it to you. Okay, um, wait a second. I also have to say this dot value equals this dot value up here. Um, this dot value equals this dot value. Beautiful. All right, now it works on first page load. And now let's add a second attribute here. Number equals, um, well, we'll say six. Okay, um, so this will tell us the number of stars. So I'm going to create a get value or a getter for the get number to get the number get number in case that wasn't obvious from the name return this dot get attribute number oh yeah and we should add defaults here so this um, by default is going to be zero and this by default is going to be five okay and then set number to value um, will be this dot set attribute number to a value all right, and now I'm going to copy all of this code, actually cut all of this code, delete it, and paste it over here. And we're also going to have to clear whatever child elements this currently has right now. So while this.firstchild, 
this dot remove child this dot first child okay and then we're resetting the value here so setting the number should work if I just say this dot number equals this dot number again a little circular but it's not working ah right because I have to change this number right here so I have to say this dot number okay there now we have six stars and if I click there it doesn't do anything so we have to add that event listener say this dot add event listener this will be the last event listener click and then we're gonna need to copy and paste basically all of this it's right here and change this line to this that value equals star index plus one Alrighty, refresh, click, awesome, and it stays. One more thing I want to implement, and it's pretty simple in this case, is a custom event listener. By the way, I should have a semicolon there. So I'm just going to say let um, rate event equals new event rate, like this. And then we can dispatch the event on this element by saying this dot dispatch event rate event, like so. And I'm also going to delete window from here because I don't need that. All right, so now we're dispatching this event, and that's not going to do anything on its own. That means I can come over here and add a script tag, and then say um, th this is a different script. I'm going to give this an ID so I can access it really easy. ID equals rating. And I'm going to say rating dot add event listener rate and right now it's just a glorified click event listener but whatever and now I can say console.log rating dot value okay and then just for the heck of it I'm gonna say rating dot number plus plus you probably never do that in a real life situation but it's just to prove that it works alright so we have six stars click there it saves it and it adds another star to the length here and it logs the value to the console. Five stars highlighted, one star highlighted. Now there's so much more that you could do with this, but I am just gonna have to leave it as is. For example, some other things you could do is maybe add a callback to a server. Obviously I don't have a server in this tutorial. Well, I do have a server, but I don't have like an API set up in this tutorial um, that we could call back to, but that's something you could use the raid event for. That'd be pretty useful. Or you could maybe make it generate a hidden form element so that you could have it as part of a form, like rate our service, how well did we do feedback, something like that. And then you could submit it to the server like a regular or old form element, like input type text or a, a number, something like that, because it's effectively, it works just like a number input, I guess. You can make it work like that. Anyways, guys, <laughs> there you go. That was pretty fun, I think. Um, that is how you make a custom star rating element using custom DOM elements in JavaScript and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.